afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land. I'm Rally Marks, bringing you the top stories, making headlines every Monday to Thursday, right here on this very channel. And like it does every day, the coronavirus is dominating Israeli headlines. So let's take a look at our stats because they are continuing to be positive. In fact, in the last 24 hours, there have just been 13 new infections and uh, the numbers are dropping slightly, or at least by one. Yesterday was 14, the day before 15, so the numbers are looking a little bit more positive. But let's take a look at how we're holding since the beginning of the pandemic. And since the beginning of the pandemic, there have been 16,539 confirmed cases. At the moment, there are 4,104 active cases with uh, 262 fatalities. Uh, there are 61 serious cases and 51 on ventilators. So those numbers are also starting to decrease significantly. But the most significant number that we can talk about is the number of full recoveries at 12,173. There have been fatalities and the fatalities at the moment are at 262. So with these good numbers means uh, some slightly more progression uh, in the lifting of restrictions. Today it was announced that uh, Ben Gurion Airport, which is the uh, international airport here in Israel, will start preparations for a full opening on the 1st of June and uh, very, very, very strict measures will be taken. One of those measures will be you will have to announce intentions of flying or that you will be flying uh, quite uh, some time before you get to the airport. Of course, there will be mandatory mask wearing and all kinds of hygiene laws, but uh, we will keep you posted. Also making the news is that uh, there will be a lifting in the amount of people who can attend weddings at wedding halls. Currently, you can have up to about 50 people as long as it's held outside. But now uh, they are starting to say that we can open up the wedding halls and have up to 100 people. Uh, sadly, we have had some people disobeying and uh, the police have announced that uh, they have fined and have kept in custody uh, some 317 ultra-Orthodox uh, who flouted the ban on gatherings and fires during Lag Omer. Those who were violent have been uh, re remanded and retained in custody, but uh, the rest have been let go with a fine. And uh, this is an issue that's causing a lot of dissension here in Israel. And we must be uh, quite specific in saying it is a certain sect within a sect and not the whole community. But the big news of the day belongs to a 97-year-old Holocaust survivor who has overcome the COVID-19 virus and was released from Rambam Hospital in Haifa earlier today. So there are these tremendous stories that are continuing to come out. And um, speaking of COVID and speaking about opening up our airports, Israel had a very significant visitor arrive this morning in the form of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who arrived uh, wearing a U.S. flag mask. Uh, he accessorized perfectly in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic. And we don't know the exact details of his discussions with both Prime Minister Netanyahu and the uh, leader of the Blue and White, Benny Gantz, who will come in as Prime Minister of Israel next September. What we do know that might be on the agenda is a little bit about possible annexations, but also mostly about how Israel and the United States can work in partnership to combat COVID-19. And uh, Secretary of State Pompeo, without mentioning the name of the country, took a little bit of a swipe at China by saying that Israel and the United States were good partners who cooperated very, very well. He said, unlike some other countries, that uh, obfuscate or hide the evidence. Gee, I wonder who he could have been speaking about. But uh, we'll be keeping you posted in the next uh, coming days if um, any of the contents of these meetings will be released. Yesterday was a particularly painful day for the State of Israel as uh, news broke that First Sergeant 
Amit Ben Igal, which is 21 years old, was killed by a Palestinian who threw a cinder block at him from the roof of a house in the town of Yabed in the West Bank. The IDF were called in to quell some violent riots and uh, First Sergeant Ben Igal was killed when the cinder block struck his head. He was wearing a helmet, but this wasn't enough and he was buried last night or late afternoon yesterday and uh, our hearts wrenched when we heard his father talk about his son, his, his only child and, and how he has been feeling absolutely broken and that there is nothing left. But um, the army have reiterated that they have made arrests and uh, that they haven't given more detail than that other than to say that the IDF were called in to try and break up extremely violent riots and this is when the chaos ensued. This is also a case that we will be following closely and bringing you updates. And uh, First Sergeant Benny Gal was Israel's first soldier to fall in the line of duty in 2020. Our thoughts, our prayers and our hearts are with his family. Those are the top stories making headlines today in Israel. Don't forget you can check out our content on our website at www.layoftheland.online. You can also check out our Facebook page. We are growing and we'd love you to be a part of it. So join us, give us a like, give us a follow, share our content. And also don't forget that we all can play our part in making sure that Israel's side of the story gets out to the masses. And if you don't share the, the Israel Brief on Facebook, you can do so by sharing our YouTube channel. We are at the Israel Brief. Simply click on the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time we bring you the news. So everybody, from a steadily warming up Israel, I'm Rony Marks, wishing you good health and safety. This is the Israel Brief. We'll speak again tomorrow.